Hey, this is Michael Kodahi. I'm going to show you everything you need to know about building web slices in three minutes. First thing you need to know is you can turn any div into a web slice by adding three class names. This right hand side here is a div. Let me show you what in code. That's that div. First thing we want to do is select the outermost element of our div and turn that into a slice by giving it a class name of hslice. IE will come along and parse that, parse the, the page and find that and say, oh, there we go, we've got a slice. Uh, next thing you want to do is actually specify where the content sits within that slice. Uh, to do that, you pick any kind of any sub-element and you give it a class name of, of entry-content. Uh, third thing you want to do is give your slice a title. Uh, and to do that, just select any element and, and give it a class name of title. In this particular instance, that's what we're going to see when we subscribe to the slice. Let's hit save, let's move over, let's refresh. So now we've turned this into a web slice. Let's click on it and add it. Add to favorites bar, cool. And now what we're going to see is an exact replica of that torn off and put onto our toolbar. Um, very cool, very easy. Um, let me delete that and show you some additional things. So. That's all good and well. One of the additional, one of the things that slices do very well is they're a subscription mechanism. So every time there's a change, the toolbar goes bold. So what we can do is actually specify a time to live. So every one minute, this slice is going to get um, checked, um, and we can also specify an end time. So at this particular date and time uh, stamp, it's going we're going to stop checking if the slice can be updated or not, right? So maybe it's an auction that's got an end date or it's a bit of content that's got an end date. That's all good and well. Uh, next thing we want to do is actually um, add potentially a, a, an, an alternate display URL. So as good as it is to be able to tear off the content from the page and stick it straight on the toolbar, perhaps you want it to look differently, perhaps you want it to have a different size header, perhaps you want it to show more data. We've got a separate page here called uh, hotoffers.aspx which actually renders the, the special in a different uh, way so that it fits nicely in a slice. Um, and to do that we uh, put a reference into to ent content entry. Let's save that, let's go over here and let's hit refresh. And now when we add our web slice, uh, it's going to look differently because now it's actually getting, it's going to display it from uh, hotoffers.aspx where we told it we want the alternate display URL to be. Pretty cool, we can now control what our slice looks like when it drops down. The other thing we want to do is control um, the feed, right? So we, maybe we don't want it to poll this whole page and check if there's a change every time. Um, we can actually specify an alternate feed. In this particular instance, this feed is, a, is an XML file. Uh, it could be anything really as long as it, it changes when the content changes and then IE will know that there's a change to the content and um, and then go bold for us. Last thing I want to show you is you can actually put a, a programmatically add a web slice. So I've got a button here and I'm calling a method on click to add favorites bar, um, a method called add favorites bar which actually just passes to it the location of the web slice. Let's save that, let's refresh that. Now you see a button here, let's hit the button and add favorites bar. So now we can initiate uh, what the web slice, uh, when the web slice gets gets added uh, programmatically so that you can control the experience behind the slice. That is pretty much everything you need to know to get going with web slices in three minutes.